Hi, how's it going, Armando? Going really well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, you are the chief critic at Adversary. Adversary, yep. Stage is yours. Thank you. Well, just a little bit about me real quick and a little bit about what, uh, what I'm bringing to the table today. Today, we're talking about the four most dangerous words in advertising. Um, how have I gotten to know what these four most dangerous words are and how have you not? Uh, well, my job is a uh, chief critic. Uh, I work for uh, a small consultancy called Adversary. Um, what we do is we do strategic teardowns of larger uh, uh, strategic campaigns and also tactical elements like landing pages, things like that, apply them against best practices, as well as recruiting ICPs for qualitative evaluation. So we've gotten to see a lot of different uh, things come across the table that that make sense, things that don't, and how we understand these foremost dangerous words. Um, the foremost dangerous words in advertising, how have I gotten to hear them? I got to work on the brand side. I've gotten to work on the agency side over the past 25 years. And the one thing I've learned is that people think marketing is a bit of a soft skill. Uh, they see it in movies and they see it in uh, uh, TV shows and they see Mad Men and they think, well, Don Draper does this. I can do it too. Uh, well, it, it's a little more complicated than that. And you can automatically tell when somebody says these four words to give to you, because you automatically can tell um, that, that they uh, are approaching something that they know very little about. Um, they have a lack of understanding about what they're being asking for. They have a lack of respect for the people who are doing it. And they have a lack of appreciation for the work that's being gone into something. And that's purely a function of, uh, people thinking that marketing is nothing more than a soft skill. And everybody in marketing knows that uh, it's not a soft skill. That's PR. PR is a soft skill. But what are these four most dangerous words? Four most dangerous words are, it just seems like. Um, when you hear these words, it's a gift. And you get to understand what somebody means and what they, they, they think and what they're approaching a problem as. They're approaching it with a lack of appreciation. They're lack, approaching it with that lack of understanding, like I said. Uh, some, some great, it just seems like moments through history. Um, it just seems like you can carry my stuff for me. Sir Edmund Hillary to Tenzing Norgay, Everest, 1953. It just seems like you should have booked the Beatles, Letterman to a sad, sad booker, 1982. And it just seems like I can declassify these things at any time. Trump to himself, Palm Springs, 2021. Um, moments in marketing history. Now, we've all seen this, and these are all near and dear to my heart. Places where people come in and they say, oh, it just seems like these icons could bounce. We all appreciate unsolicited design expertise from people who don't really understand and appreciate what goes into it. Uh, a client to me in 2005, it just seems like we could double the budget and double the leads. Well, it just seems like it, but with this mathematical economic theory called the uh, point of diminishing returns, it doesn't always necessarily work like that. And it just, this is my favorite and we've all seen this and we've all heard it. It just seems like we could make this go viral because it is just that easy to make something go viral. And where are we today? Moments and just seems like, and it just seems like present. It just seems like AI could do all of this writing for us, along with all the design work and along with all the management. Well, that seems like a great idea, but it's not really, really tenable to have uh, all these things happen like that. And it's once again, not a clear understanding of what AI can do for you and what AI should do for you. When you hear these words, it's safe to assume that uh, you're dealing with somebody with a highly non-technical background, somebody who doesn't understand uh, what goes into a website or what goes into a design or what goes into any of the elements that are there. Coming from a place of pure, the truest term, the truest meaning of the word ignorance, people coming from that place of utter complete ignorance. It just seems like you could do this thing that I have no concept of what goes into it. Another thing that, that that's a bit of a gift when you hear these words is you get to understand that you're, you might be dealing with just a narcissist who loves their own ideas. Happens all the time. We've all seen that <clears throat> sea level and um, people who love uh, love just espousing their own ideas and, and, and getting into it and, and, and making other people do bring their vision to life without any real appreciation or understanding of what's gone into it. Um, honestly, more times than not, whenever you hear it just seems like it's probably a pretty Pretty bad idea from a CX perspective, from a UX perspective, from a general business perspective. And the reason for that is, is typically whenever you hear these words, the person has stolen the idea from somebody else. And that's just an unfortunate reality of, of where we are and what's happening in the world. Um, 
when somebody sees uh, an idea, they, they automatically want to apply it to themselves and they want to apply it to their business. And the number of times I've had a, a C-level people get off an airplane and tell me that they want to do something that they read about in Sky Miles or the, uh, the Delta Sky magazine uh, has been is not only frustrating, it's, it's, it's a little scary because when you hear these words, you automatically know that there is no rationale for it. There is no sound judgment behind it. There is nothing other than somebody saw something and they want to do something or they think that they could this could happen quite easily and quite painlessly without an appreciation of the technical elements that go into developing something like that. So how do you deal? How do you deal with it? Well, the truth of the matter is, is when you hear it, it just seems like you will shudder for the rest of your life, I hope, because you understand now what those four words are loaded with, those four most dangerous loaded words. But it's okay. It's all right. When you hear those words, you have an opportunity. As marketers, we have an opportunity. We know we're dealing with somebody who doesn't appreciate uh, marketing as anything more than a soft skill. You know you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have anything technical uh, to bring to the table. Uh, you're dealing with somebody who might have pilfered the idea from somewhere else. Uh, and you're dealing with somebody who just may like their own ideas and want to see them brought to life by somebody else, by underlings, and then take the glory and credit for themselves. And that's fine. We will, we live in business. It is what it is. But the opportunity here is, is, despite all those negatives, you have a few golden opportunities here to develop, to listen, to make some connections, and to help dispel that it just seems like and replace that with, I understand a little bit better. So the first thing is listen, listen to the person. There could be a jewel in their ignorance. And, and when we say ignorance, we don't mean it with that connotation of you're dumb or you're stupid or anything like that. Ignorance is simply the vacuum of knowledge. And when somebody brings you an idea that comes uh, with that vacuum of knowledge, there may be something in it. Listen to it, understand it, get to the heart of their idea because they're trying to communicate something. They think they can, they obviously can't because they started off with those four most dangerous words. They don't have the vocabulary. They told you they don't have the vocabulary when they said, it just seems like. So listen to them, help them get to the point of what they're trying to communicate and give them that vocabulary because you're gonna start to break down those walls of it just seems like. Thirdly, lastly, know why you did what you did. When somebody comes in and says, uh, it just seems like, they don't have a great appreciation for what they're asking for. They don't have a great appreciation for what you've already done. Make sure you communicate to them why you've done what you've done and why, where their idea fits, if at all, into it. Kibosh it, kill it, make sure they understand, but know why you kill an idea and it doesn't come from a place of my idea is better. It doesn't come from a place of I'm a creative. It doesn't come from a place of I'm a strategist. It comes from a place of this is why. This is the why of what we're doing. This is the why of how it's happening. And this is why your idea doesn't necessarily fit into it or better yet, maybe this is why it does.